I just kind of, I zipped him up. We thought it was funny. And um, we're joking about how he was, I guess, small enough to fit inside a suitcase. Were you trying to kill him? Never. Did you want to kill him? I did not. Did you do anything to help him escape from the predicament that you zipped him up in? No. They were just playing hide Whoa. and seek. It was all fun and games until it wasn't. Alleged suitcase killer Sarah Boone Suit took the stand K. Tuesday to tell jurors what she says happened the night she reportedly zipped her boyfriend into a suitcase and left him there to die. Boone testified it was all just a joke, so how did things take such a horrific turn? We're going to take a look back at the top moments from Sarah Boone's testimony. Welcome to Sidebar, presented by Law & Crime. Uh, Jesse Weber. Let's talk about day three of the highly anticipated murder trial. Oh, Lord. Sarah Boone. It was on this day that jurors were able to hear from, of all people, the defendant herself as Sarah Boone attempted to explain the chaotic events leading up to the death of her boyfriend, George Torres Jr. Now, here's what we know. In February 2020, Boone was arrested at her home in Winter Park, Florida, near Orlando. Now, prosecutors. Yep, we saw all that footage too. Just charged her with second degree murder after she allegedly forgot that George was zipped up inside of a small piece of luggage where he suffocated. Investigators found videos taken on Boone's cell phone that showed George begging to be let out while Boone seems to laugh and calls him out for apparently cheating on her. And since her arrest, Boone has gone viral, not only for the bizarre and insidious details revealed in the buildup to this trial and George Torres's death, but also she's apparently very difficult to work with. Boone had various attorneys bow out due to conflicts of interest. Then others asked to be various, wouldn't it like 12? Be removed because working with Boone was basically impossible. The judge decided that she actually forfeited her right to counsel and that she would have to represent herself at trial, whether she wanted to or not. But her current counsel swooped in at the 11th hour to represent her. Now, Sarah Boone has claimed a battered Whoa. woman's defense, a battered person's defense. And it does appear that she and George Torres were in an abusive relationship. And essentially, this defense is a way to justify self-defense, the use of deadly force, if you were subjected to repeated abuse. Now, to be clear, domestic violence charges had been filed between the two previously, and photos of Boone's injuries allegedly at the hands of George were shown in court to the jury. And Boone herself had a chance to tell her side of the story on Tuesday when she took the stand. Now, she described mm. how she and George had been drinking heavily for most of the day in question. Michelle, what'd you find out? That they had been spending some time at home since they didn't have money to really go out. She said that they had been playing puzzles. They were doing some art projects. And then she says that George wanted to play a game of hide and seek. Puzzles and art projects. And then you wanted to play hide and go seek. Were y'all on a date or like setting up a preschool? Oh, dare you. This is crazy as hell. We were finger painting, making macaroni and cheese art. We were making turkeys out of our handprints. Have you ever done that? Do you remember doing that when you were eight? Oh my God, this is crazy. And shortly after, did you get out your easy bake oven to make him some dinner? My God. Did he spell out that he loved you on his light bright? <laughs> that is when things took a very deadly turn. So from here... We all listening to some music on your Teddy Ruxpin? This is ridiculous. Sarah promised her book rights to pay for her pro bono lawyer. Oh, damn. I'm going to let you hear it from the defendant herself, Sarah Boone. Take a listen. Um, I don't even think I made it all the way down the stairwell because I was just looking for him as soon as I could um, to hopefully go upstairs as soon as we could. And um, I saw, I looked over and I saw him settling himself in the suitcase. What did you do? In my head, I said, oh man, um, we're obviously not going to be going to sleep anytime soon. When you got to him, did he see you? Yes. All right. Tell us what happened. Um, I, I mean, 
I just kind of, I zipped him up. We thought it was funny and um, we're joking about how he was I guess, small enough to fit inside of the suitcase. This is crazy as hell. If you put somebody in a suitcase and you're laughing about it, you laugh about it for a few seconds. And then you say, okay, I'm just kidding. Let me get you out of there. You don't like leave him in there and then take videos of you sitting on the couch and he's falling over being like, oh, God, did you shit on me. Remember she was wasted in that video or she sounded like she was wasted in that video. But she was just like, <coughs> you shit on me. And he's like, I can't, let me out. <coughs> this is crazy. Um, from there, it was just... Um... We were laughing about it, and um, it was just strange that he was small enough to fit in there. And then um, I... I think it's more strange that you left him in there. Kind of moved it around a little bit with him in the suitcase still. It was still funny that he was still in the suitcase. Just, I think he and I were just kind of... Couldn't believe that he was he could fit in the suitcase. Did you eventually close the top? Yes, in order for, well, the top was already closed. As he was settling himself in there, it was, that's how I knew he was in there was because the top was kind of flopping a little bit. You knew, that's how you knew he was in there? You didn't know he was in there because you helped him get in there and zip it up? The only reason you knew is because the top of the suitcase was popping up a little bit? Man, you are crazy as hell. He had gotten in there to hide, and he pulled the top. Yes. On top of it. But you could tell he was in there. Yes. You saw him right away. Yes. Man, you better pack your suitcases because you're going to jail. All right. So at some point, did you zip him up? Yes. You... And what was he saying or doing when you were zipping him up? <clears throat> I just thought it was funny. Um, Probably sounded like this. Ah! <laughs> crazy as hell this doesn't make any sense y'all like this doesn't feel like it's real life this feels like it's got to be like we live in a simulation mm -hmm. yes and um so you zipped yeah, him up there i can't breathe that's exactly well, still laughing once you zipped him up yes okay. so again according to sarah boone this was one big joke now, they had consumed a ton of alcohol that day, and as the night wore on, she says it was George who started this hide-and-seek game and that he was the one who voluntarily crawled into the suitcase. But Boone admits that... Yeah, but the problem is you can't voluntarily zip yourself up in the suitcase. She's the one who actually zipped him up inside. But again, according to Sarah Boone, this was all just part of the fun. So... Why was he struggling inside the suitcase? Well, remember, at the center of this case is this two-minute video where George is trapped inside of that suitcase, very clearly heard saying he cannot breathe, begging for Boone to let him out. But according to Boone, George was violent with her, that he was violent with her on more than one occasion, and especially when he was intoxicated. So keeping him confined, she says, gave her a chance to feel safe from him. Take a listen. That's when I... I went over and decided to um, videotape to just see the, um, I guess the, the jest in it for him to understand that right now I feel safe and right now I have the ability to actually speak to you um, in a manner that normally I would not have the ability to do. I mean, you were intoxicated. Yes. And you would agree that you said some things you should not have. Yes. But you, you realized he could not get out and get at you. Is that fair? At that moment, yes. So the, it goes on for about 10 minutes. Um, yes. You, you heard it here today, did you not? Yes. You heard. Oh, hell. YouTube, hit the thumbs up button, hit the subscribe button, TikTok. Hit the follow button if you're new here. My name's Patrick. If you like true crime, I'm live every night. Come on in. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the follow button. Thanks for the candles, y'all. Hit me with those candles so we can hit that goal so TikTok doesn't get mad as hell at this channel. You heard his voice as he was speaking from the suitcase. Yes. That was his voice on the video and audio. Yes. 
and you heard your voice on the video and audio. Yes. That was your voice. Good, thank you. Yes. All those things said by the man were said by George in that two-minute video. Correct. All the words said by the female were said by you in that two-minute video. Correct. Were you intending on showing him the video the next day? Yes. At the time or the next day, is it fair to say you don't even remember a video thing? I do not. Okay. So, from what you can tell from watching it, did that refresh your memory about that event? It did. Why did you say all that? I... Realist, thank you. I want you all to know that no, thank you. I, the majority of the time, I'm always afraid and always scared. All right, well, I understand that. Yeah, I understand that. But um, would it be fair to say that you had some anger at that point? I did. I... Would it be fair to say that you wanted to tell him off to some degree? I just wanted, yes, for him to have a better understanding, um, which was the whole point of the videos and documentation prior. And you could tell that he was uncomfortable. I'm guessing. And did, did you want him to feel some uncomfort? I did. Okay. So, in other words, she's telling the jury that this video was her way to talk to George, to get him to listen to her. But also, in that video, she can be heard seemingly mocking George and reminding him of times where right. he says he beat her up. Lindy, thank you. Now, what is not on that video, she says, is George threatening to hurt her if he gets out of the suitcase. It got very heated very quickly, and he continued to push on the suitcase. And uh, if somebody zip me up into a suitcase, you better believe I'm going to be yelling, you better unzip this thing or else. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what are you going to say? Oh, my God, unzip this thing. Hurry up and do it so I can make you a hot tea. No, you'll be like, get me the out of here. This is crazy as hell. Debbie says this case triggers me. <laughs> well, yup. Um, my fear was that he was going to break out of the suitcase knowing that it was a broken suitcase. And um, his hand started to come through. His, his hand started to come through this way. And so I shook the suitcase. I shook the suitcase trying to get his hand to go back in, shaking it and telling him that, please stop doing this. Please, please stop doing this to me. Please stop doing this to me. So his hand is. You're yelling at the man inside of a suitcase to stop doing this to you? <laughs> okay. If you're scared of him to this point, and you're like, man, I got this is it. And he's in the damn suitcase. You call 911. He ain't moving, clearly. And tell him, say, call him up and be like, yo, cops, yup. This is an open and shut case. <laughs> it's terrible. Can actually got out of the suitcase. Yes. And you went to the suitcase. Yes. And shook it. Yes. Did that force his hand to go back in? No. Um, so you're shaking it. Were you shaking it to try to get the suitcase, his yeah. hand back in? Yes. How long did you shake it? I don't know. But his hand was still so, out. More than three times you're playing with it, Sarah. Yes. Was he trying to get out? That was a good one. Forcefully, yes. Was he angry at you? Yes. Were you in fear? Always. If he would have gotten out of the suitcase, what would he have done to you? Like he used to tell me, he probably would have made me unrecognizable or I would have uh, lost my life. Okay, that testimony is key to Sarah Boone's defense. Remember, she's claiming- Yeah, she's claiming um, battered- Claiming self-defense, that her, spouse her life was in imminent danger if George got out of that suitcase and all of this fear stems from a history of alleged past abuse. So 
We're at the point where George is doing anything he can to get out of the suitcase, even sticking his hand through, but Boone claims she is deathly afraid and is not going to let him out. For the split second reaction that I had, I happened to see that and I grabbed the baseball bat and was trying to poke his hand to go back in to please don't go, don't break through. You were hitting his hand with a baseball bat to get it to go back in? What in the heck? Man, this is crazy. Oh, please. So I hit his hand. And you said you poked him with it? Yeah. If this wasn't, like, if we didn't know that this was real life, this sounds like a spirit Halloween, like, decoration. Like, this is crazy. Yes, I, I kind of pushed, um, like, I held it with... TikTok, hit me with those candles, though. Let's crush that goal. That was the first goal. We still haven't hit it yet. Hit me with the horror candles right there. Do it, y'all. Skinny part here, and then... So, so kind of you're up here. Brought it at it, yes. You grabbed, you, you grabbed it with both hands here. Yes. And then the barrel of the bat, the big part of the bat, is here. Correct. And you thrusted it into the different areas of the suitcase? I started with his hand, and his hand, he was still trying to get out. He was still trying to do that so i started to he said he couldn't breathe of course he was going to try to get out to push on the suitcase who gets in a suitcase and is just like i'm going to live here now this is my home feed me through the slot feed me through the slot please man this is crazy you go burn in hell for that one lady around it hoping to have his hand retract and go back inside. Stella Wendy, thank you. You made those injuries. I did. We've seen the photographs. Yes. We see the the bruising. Is that from that bat? Yes. So yeah, she hit him with the damn bat. Eventually did his Stella, hand thank go you. back inside from you so sweet. doing Yes, finally he had had subsided and retracted his hand. So in your mind, did you prevent him from attacking you? Absolutely. Did you believe that he could breathe in there? Yes. Did you ever believe he could die in there? No, at all. Were you trying well, to- Well, you were wrong as hell. Kill him. Never. Did you tell her thank you. Did you want to kill him? I did not. Let's set the stage one more time here, to be clear. Sarah Boone is admitting to not only zipping up George in the suitcase, but also essentially shoving him inside of it. First by shaking the suitcase and then even with a baseball bat. So eventually the tense moment dies down and George stops trying to escape, but she still does. Oh Lord, Misty, thank you so much for the super chat. Thank you so very much. Very, very, very sweet. Doesn't let him out. She just walks away, heads upstairs. Uh, you might be wondering, why didn't Sarah Boone just call the police at this point if she was truly this afraid of George Torres? After that all, part. George is zipped up in the suitcase. He can't hurt her from inside. Well, yeah. turns out she did make a phone call, but it wasn't to the police. It was to her ex-husband. Yep, I remember this. Peggy, thank you. And that's all she says she remembers before going to sleep, leaving George Torres inside of that suitcase where he eventually died. So what was her reaction when she found him the next day? How did you feel when you saw the suitcase? I don't think I've ever experienced anything like that before. Describe it for the jury. Oh, so you, didn't, you haven't ever zipped anybody else up in a suitcase and left them for dead? I don't like this lady. I do not like this lady. Like, she just seems like just somebody I would not, I don't want to hang around. I don't want to do your macaroni art. I don't want to do puzzles with you. I don't want to drink a bottle of wine. I don't want to get in a damn suitcase. I don't want anything to do with you. You seem crazy as hell. I'm out. I guess it was... I was aghast. And... I just can't just... Why are you trying to sound smarter than you are, too? Describe the feeling. You get that? Like, she said, uh, I was a goss. No, you were uh, an aliver. It was terror to Bless a you. certain degree. I'm sorry. Say that again now. It was terror to a certain degree. Um, 
I just can't describe it in words, the feeling of remembering. And then he was still in there. So what did you do? Called your ex-husband. I immediately unzipped the... I immediately ends up the suitcase and I Oh, there you go. Just several hours too freaking late, you crazy woman. I was screaming, George, 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 and I was shaking him. I was shaking him. And I pulled him out and I stretched him out flat. And then I began instantly trying to do CPR and then was Oh my God. Lady, you crazy as hell. I'm pretty sure nurses help me out with this. If that guy's no longer in the land of the living, it, you ain't going to just pull him out and stretch him out. His body's not going to be very stretchy anymore. They call that rigor mortis. Trying to look for a pulse or a breath or just anything. And um was just screaming his name over and over and over again. And Man, you crazy. So on, you should have been looking for a lawyer. George, come on, George. And... I continued CPR, continued CPR, and I continued CPR, and um, he was gurgling, and... What color was it? Gurgling? She probably... I thought they proved she didn't do CPR. You know what? She probably did, like, the TV show and movie CPR, you know, where she's like... Oh, oh, you know, but they don't actually... Because you got to break ribs, y'all. You got to get in there and, like... Ain't going to be much left of your sternum. What color was he? Yes. He was purple. It's at this point that Boone calls her ex-husband again, who then tells her, Jesse, why you got a purple light behind you right then, too? You couldn't change that? <laughs> Jesse's got a purple light behind him. LED light. Call 911. And then George is declared dead. Oh, hell. Oh, hell. Steph Case Files. Hey, what you doing, y'all? Give Steph a, a follow. Did you get 100K yet? You so dang close, y'all. Give her some love. Now, Boone admits on the stand that she lied to police, and she gives more details that... Oh, man, you lied to the police? Oh, crap. Now, are you lying now? Are you lying then? Are you not lying? Who's lying? Are you lying? ...might support her battered person syndrome. I lied to the police. Stella, thank you for the baby penguin. Basically everyone, because I was... Extremely fearful of being a liar. Being arrested. I made the first attempt of me calling 911 by telling them what happened, and I thought they, they were going to help me, but instead I was arrested for calling 911. So you made the decision. You weren't arrested because you called 911, you crazy. Mm. You got arrested because you took someone's life. <laughs> God, I hate when people just no accountability. I got arrested because I called 911. No, you got arrested because of your actions. I did. Did you stay with that lie? I did. Are you telling the truth today? I am. <laughs> Are you sure? Now let me take you back to Are you doing are you telling the truth now or are you just trying to say what suits your case? You get that one? Suitcase suits your case? No? I thought that was good. To the um <clears throat> to this incident. No Teddy Ruxpin for her ass, exactly. Is it fair to say that when George Torres is sober, he commits no violence against you? No. Is that fair to say? Yes. Is it fair to say that every time that he's intoxicated or every time that you're hit by him or harmed by him, it's when he's intoxicated? Yes. As a result, when he's drinking, does it change your outlook? Yes. Could you explain that to the jury? 
I'm always fearful. Um, paranoia. Why? I, Why? Because I try to protect and defend myself for fear something happens at the last ultimate second. But you're always that way. Fear the last ultimate second. That's a weird way to say that. The hell did you mean by that? By the way, uh, TikTok, hit the follow button if you're new here. My name's Patrick. If you like true crime, we're live every night. So hit the follow button. Tap the screen like crazy. Thank you for all of the likes. Y'all hit me with some baby penguins. Apparently, that's what they want. And if you guys want to watch the video, come on over to YouTube. Y'all, seriously, come over to YouTube. Just just follow the channel or subscribe to the channel. It's called The Mystery Project. We're live there right now, The Mystery Project on YouTube. Just search it, subscribe, click my face, hit the YouTube button. You can find it real easy. Subscribe, come back in, or stay over there and watch the video. You can actually see it over there. But go subscribe. We're getting close to 20,000 subscribers on YouTube, y'all. We're at 19,351. So come on. Hit it up. Is it and, and YouTube, hit the thumbs up button. Come on, y'all. We're trying to get 100 likes. We used to do that no problem. Now we got 80 right now. Come on, let's get it. Because of these prior incidences. Absolutely. And by the way, when we discuss battered person yeah, syndrome... That usually can be characterized by the psychological effects that result from living with intimate partner violence. According to experts, this can cause a person to have flashbacks of traumatic events, an increased sense of a fight or flight response to perceive danger, even causing someone to take action to eliminate a potential threat. So what exactly are these prior incidents that Boone testified to? Well, I have to tell you, her descriptions are really brutal. And she says that they always occurred when George had been drinking. And remember, Boone testified that on the day in question, George was drinking. She knew this meant that he could harm her. And George actually had been arrested for past instances of domestic violence. The jury, even as I mentioned, got to see pictures of just how horrific this past alleged abuse really was. And they heard countless stories of this, including an incident where George apparently stabbed Boone with a butcher knife. Dear Lord. You. Yes. Are those injuries to your arm? Yes. Were they caused by George Torrey? Yes. And during the same incident, is this you? Yes. Is that an injury or bruise to your uh, ribcage area? Yes. You had to go to the hospital as a result of these injuries to your thigh? Yes. Okay. Okay. Is, is that a depiction of the bird? Yes. Is that your thought? It's my thought, yes. And your knee? Yes. So, George stabbed me in my leg. I almost bled to death. All right, well, let's, let's go back and explain what led up to that. I thought it would be nice to cook Thanks a nice steak dinner. We don't have two nickels rubbed together, so I thought it would be special to make a steak dinner and bake potato and go above the normal whatever's left over in the refrigerator. And oh, hell, I want a steak and baked potato now. And, um, and then um, he came upstairs and saw that I had made the steak dinner and... I don't know how to describe how drunk he was, but it definitely was not George. And um, then he started to pull on me and kept saying that, excuse me, that I just want to you, you on the steak and you on the, on the potatoes. And That's not what he meant by he wants his steak raw. <laughs> Yo, I'm unstoppable. Okay, just. You might as well hit the follow button. You might as well subscribe. You might as well do all the things because it ain't getting any better than that right there. That's a damn good joke right there. And I took offense to that, and I kept trying to encourage him to eat. I started to crawl off of the bed to leave, um, just just the bedroom. And Wait, he what? told me again that I'm not going anywhere, and he stabbed me in my leg, and it crunched you could hear a noise that it made and blood just started to come out of my leg just 
like a fountain. Here's a question you might be asking. And put them in the suitcase then. We're seeing these horrifying pictures where- You know what happened? This is what happened, y'all. Okay, dude's obviously not a very nice guy. Piece of garbage, really, if he's putting his hands on a woman. Sounds like he also had bruises and things like that. Because didn't they say that? I remember hearing that, that he also, like, she came at him a few times, too. Toxic, horrible thing, right? Horrible relationship. He got in the damn suitcase and she and she was drunk and she was she didn't think maybe she didn't think he was going to like but she put him in the damn suitcase and she felt like ha I can do whatever I want because there's no way you're getting out. You know what I mean? And it ended up going too far taking his life. So did she premeditate is this premeditated? Red rum? I don't think so. Is this like man slaughter? Sounds like it. But I don't know. I'm not these people. I don't know. What is what is her actual uh, charge, y'all? Somebody tell me. What is her actual charge? Is she facing first degree? Is she facing man? Opportunity. Yeah. Like it just so happened. I don't know. I could be wrong. Who knows? Y'all tell me what you think. Thumbs up. You agree. Thumbs down. You don't. Hearing Sarah Boone's account of that night with the steak knife. Why didn't she just leave George? As anyone who has ever been in love or. Oh, second degree is what they're charging her. Or I looked it up. Primarily someone or something. You go above and beyond and you tolerate and you endure and you persevere. And you try to make that per person as spectacular as you possibly can, no matter the sacrifice that you may have to go through. Um, to serve someone else um, in a positive light so they can be better people for um, themselves and to just make them a happier person. Okay, that was the direct examination. Direct examination, you get to tell your story, then you face cross-examination from the prosecution. And the prosecution here questioned Sarah Boone on a few different things, and they questioned her as to how much alcohol she actually drank that day. Boone testified under direct examination that she had several bottles of wine, but as the state pointed out, based on the size of the bottles, this would actually turn out to be a really significant amount of wine. You go to Publix and you get that 1.5 liter Magnum bottle of Woodbridge Chardonnay, correct? I'm not sure what Magnum is. 1.5 liters, instead of the 750s. It's the double size. That's a big boy. That's eight glasses of wine, Sarah. You trying to tell me you don't know what that is? You what? She said, I I'm not, I'm not, um, I'm not familiar with a, a magnum, you say? What's that? How oh, dare you? Lady, you've probably been drinking magnums of Chardonnay since you were like 16. Calm the hell down, all right? It's like two bottles of wine. Okay, yes. So you got a 1.5 liter, right? Yes, it is the larger bottle. And you got home, and you at 100 pounds. And yes, sir. You, oh, Magnum? Hmm. Mr. Torres at 103 pounds began drinking this wine, correct? I'm, I'm guessing so. I'm not going to guess times. Well, don't guess. I mean, you got home from Publix. When was your first drink? I'm not sure. I mean, we could have continued to do uh, whatever was left over from what we didn't do before we went to Publix. Okay, so you may have drank, started drinking. And what the hell are you talking about? Did you get home and open the bottle? Or did you wait 30 minutes? Did you wait an hour? Did you, real, did you not know how to open it because it wasn't a box of wine? So you had to watch a YouTube video on how to get that corkscrew in there? Did it even have a corkscrew or was it a twist top?
even later, correct? Then 1230 when you get back from Publix? I, 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 I don't know. Okay. Was it 1.30 or 2.30 when you began drinking? I don't know. All right. Was it before any of the phone calls to the brothers and, the, and his daughters? Yes. Here's the problem I have with these kind of people. When it comes to the stuff that, like, her defense, it's like, well, it was this, and it was this, and he put his hand through, and then this was happening, and this was happening. Then when it comes to the cross-examination, well, I don't know. I don't know. I don't remember. I don't know. I don't know. What the hell? If you're telling the truth, you should be able to answer every single question that both sides ask you the same way, always. Like just boom, 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 boom. When did you start drinking? Probably about 10 minutes after I got home. Oh, okay. What? Like you don't know anything that the prosecution's asking you. You just, your mind is blank. Man, you crazy as hell. And so you drink what's left in the mag, the bottle of wine from the day before that's halfway labeled, correct? At some point. And then you At drink some point. 1.5 liters of wine, and he goes out and gets another one on his own without your permission or suggestion about 5.30, correct? Correct. And then you all consume that one as well, and it ends up in the trash can at the end of the night, correct? Apparently. Okay. Apparently. Man, you are crazy as hell, lady. You don't even remember if the bottle ended up in the trash can? You were going to go to prison. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. She's going to be convicted. This is crazy. And three liters of wine? Jesus Christ. I'm surprised you didn't end up in the suitcase with him. This is crazy. Three liters of wine, plus whatever they had from the night day before. Holy hell. That is crazy. <laughs> That's almost a gallon, y'all. Was it 3.7 liters in a gallon? So probably the other half of the bottle of wine. Y'all drank a gallon of wine. Get out of here. At what point in the night... Does your memory tape stop? Because you've described clearly the entire night that it wasn't on at 11:03 p.m. when that photograph was taken. What's the last thing you actually do remember prior to these videos being made? Stella, thank you. Y'all hit me with those penguins. I I don't recall it at this point. I <laughs> Lisa, right? Lisa said, "What is leftover wine?" <laughs> I I don't remember. Now, these bottles were apparently magnum size. Essentially, we're talking about two normal bottles inside of one big bottle that both she and George Torres, reportedly both around 100 pounds, consumed over the course of the day. He had been angry on and off throughout the entire day. Okay. You didn't tell us that earlier. You said it was a wonderful, fun day all day, correct? That's because I lived. Okay. That's because you lived? What? But you did not tell us earlier today that he had been angry throughout the day. When would I say that? You described your entire day of doing puzzles. You can't even remember what you just said when you were testifying? Man, lady, you are crazy as hell. Do you know what you do you know what that's called? Lying. Because you can't keep them straight. I didn't say we were having a wonderful fun day. Oh, really? So you were doing macaroni art pissed off? You were doing pissed off macaroni art? Who does a puzzle angry? Who does a puzzle? I can get angry doing the puzzle, but I'm not just going to be like, I'm pissed. Give me these pieces. Which ones are corners? Ah! Nobody does that. You're crazy as hell, lady. This is ridiculous. You're, gonna, you're going to jail. And arts and crafts and outside by the dartboard, and you said it was a wonderful day and everything was fun uh, until... He was in the suitcase. Did you not testify to that earlier today? I did. Okay. My specific question between these two movies is, this is when he begins to get angry and trying to push his way out and to get out of the suitcase, correct? Angry again, yes. Okay. And he was expressing his anger. Maybe, thank you. In what manner? How did he say this? At which point throughout the day? Oh, dear God. The point where he went from macaroni to ziti. 
and then he got really pissed and started breaking some manicotti. What are you talking about, lady? Linguini? <laughs> Man. <laughs> Ma'am, you know very well that I'm talking about between these movies. Please answer my question. Between these two movies, how did he express his anger with you? Told me that I was going to die. Okay. Now, this is happening after he's already told you several times he cannot breathe in the suitcase, correct? Correct. And he's been in there for whatever brief amount of time it took you to zip him up, and it's the laughter stops, and then you go over to begin to film, correct? The laughter stops. And you're filming, your purpose of filming is to kind of teach him a lesson. This is your chance to say something to him when he can't say anything back to you, correct? No. Then correct me. There was no lesson to be learned. It was just I wanted him to try to understand how I felt. So maybe... <laughs> I wasn't trying to he wasn't trying to learn a lesson. I was trying to teach him how I felt. <laughs> I was trying to have him vigorously remember how I was thinking. So learn a lesson. No. Maybe he could progress and being a better person the next day. So he could progress and be a better person the next day. Oh, like learning something? Man, you crazy. Did you progressively learn? No, sorry. Did you progressively become a better person behind the wheel of a car? Or did you learn how to drive the car? You crazy as hell, lady. So... You wanted him to understand how you felt in the past, and that's not teaching a lesson? I just wanted him to understand. <laughs> and that's not teaching him a lesson? No, I wanted him to understand. By teaching him a lesson, quit putting words in my mouth. Here, it seems the state is really poking holes into Boone's self-defense argument. Boone didn't testify to any violence happening prior to this, and from her account, she and George were actually enjoying each other's company that day. Where Lizzie, thank you. There was the imminent danger. Now, towards the end of her cross-examination, Sarah Boone actually demonstrated for the jury how she zipped George Torres inside of that suitcase where, again, she would ultimately leave him to suffocate and die. Dear God, she's probably trying to get the damn prosecutor to get in there. Let me show you exactly what I did. Can we see how it was that the two zipper parts were positioned when you say that Mr. Torres was able to get his hand out. You know what the craziest part is? That's the suitcase. And she looks fine and dandy over there. She's nothing. Don't try to... Oh, by the way, Sarah, don't try to teach the jurors anything. Make sure that they're progressing to become a better juror tomorrow or some shit. Whatever the hell word salad bullshit you just said. If you want me to do it, I'm fine to take your direction. Um, from what I remember. <clears throat> Look, he even said, do you want me to do it? And Because if, if, if it was an accident, she wouldn't just be like, well, let me just have, grab this thing and just do it. Let me just show you. But she just grabbed it and started doing it. Like she has no problem touching it, opening it. Dude passed away in there. It's from the here. <clears throat> this was not this hard either. You are crazy as hell for saying that. Did y'all hear what she just said? She's over there trying to get it open, and she goes, it wasn't this hard either. Emotional damage. You crazy as hell for saying that. Oh, so it was easier the day that you him? This one, like here. Okay. Right there, ma'am. Sure. Sure. 
This kind of. I assume this one was much closer. It's kind of important. It's not over there. <laughs> Hope G, you're funny. Hope G says, sorry, but this girl doesn't weigh 100 pounds. <laughs> Emotional damage. <laughs> Where do you where do you leave? You asked me where I said. Oh. Dead. When when you say that was zip shut, show us. Are you talking about how I zipped it or? When you're done zipping it shut and he's inside of it, where are the zipper components? Just tell me what it's at. I mean, it was the corner. Mm -hmm. I mean, the corner was, was right here. Open. I mean, here. it's not. Yes, yes. this one was already pretty much. Yes. From what I can remember. That's how he was coming with his hand out. It was like this from the corner part. Okay. Is that something? Thank you. Did you do anything to help him escape from the predicament that you zipped him up in? No. And right here at the very end of her cross-examination, jurors are left with one powerful fact. Sarah Boone did nothing to help George Torres out of that suitcase. Not when he tried to escape, not when he told her he couldn't breathe. That is a big point. We expect the defense's case to continue. We are going to bring you all of the major updates out of this really high-profile Florida murder trial, and we will follow it for you here on Sidebar. Oh, hell. Right there, too, TikTok posted a thing saying, you can't talk about that. Thanks a lot, TikTok overlords. Y'all are crazy as hell. Oh, because it was talking about rugs. And because the themes may find uncomfortable. Regulated goods content? What the hell are you talking about, TikTok overlords? Y'all are crazy as hell for that. YouTube, I love you guys. Hit the thumbs up button before you leave. Thank you for being here. Thanks for everything. You guys are amazing. I love you guys. YouTube, good night. Be safe. And I'll see you all tomorrow. <clears throat>